Guys, part four, okay? So what we've got now is we've got our pieces mitered, all the glue's done, okay? Our lid's pressed, all that sort of stuff's done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape them together. So remember, they're numbered, so two to two, one to one, or whatever way you numbered them. So you wanna sort of clamp a, a straight edge here, okay? Just to align the um, pieces against. So first, number one to one, against your straight edge, whatever your straight edge would be, bit of wood, whatever it is, you know, and up against. Now, don't be too concerned about any wee sort of small gaps that are in there in your mitre. That'll all sort of bring itself together. So first, a wee bit of tape. Now, the good thing about sort of coating each side uh, initially with sand sealer is that when you do apply tape and then you take the tape off, it's not going to rip the grain out. You know, I'm sure if any anybody's done any veneering before and they've put tape on and they've went to peel it off and it's ripped the grain out, well, it's, you know, it's a wee bit sort of messy, that, okay? So first, put them together and then put a wee bit of tape here, just in the center, okay? So that's gonna stop it moving this way. And then we we'll want a piece at the top, like so, and we we'll wanna pull, we want a wee bit of tension on that, okay? So that'll pull, that's pulling the mitre together. A wee bit of tension, not too much, just a wee bit. But down. Same with there, okay? Slide that along. W one other thing, uh, um, your table, it's probably, you know, if it's a workbench, it's probably got glue on it, lumps, all sorts of stuff. I usually just put down a sheet of sort of like, you know, 9mm MDF. Nice new sheet, there's no sort of lumps on it, because you don't want to damage the inside, okay? So, bringing our, our next side down. So we've got a side, a front, and then our next side, okay? Again, up, pulling these slightly downward to your uh, straight edge. Put a tip, a wee bit of tension. Okay, and then bring our matching side there, bring it up, put them down, keep them together. Okay. A bit of tension. Okay. That's what our inside looks like. Okay. So. And then, if you remembered the sort of setup I spoke about last week, you should have a very small gap, a slight wee bit of resistance there. Okay. Again, that just ensures the insides are nice and tight not too much resistance you don't want this up here you're going to end up with far too much of a gap on the outside okay so because the inside base is the only part that's lined the sides are going to be visible from the inside so we we'll want them we've only had sort of you know a coat of sand sealer on that or two coats whatever you put on um, so we want to first sort of denib that um, and then wax it so that it's uh, nice and soft and silky smooth, okay? Right, okay. Gonna denib the inside. So what we've got here is 400 grit. You know, whatever sort of sandpaper you're gonna use, 400, okay? And a wee sort of small cork block, okay? So, wanna go along the grain, like so. And sort of try when you come to the ends here don't do this don't round them edges over i want to keep them nice and crisp okay okay just back that Okay, so that's pretty smooth, but it needs a wee bit more. Mm 
not too heavy guys light pressure if you're too heavy you're only going to burn through that sort of finish Okay, nice and smooth um, what you want to make sure is that you definitely get all the dust out of your grain um, you know just so that you don't have any sort of white bits in it if you used um, the same type of finish as me you know it's fantastic works really well if you use shellac might clog up slightly but should be okay okay so what we want to do is we want to dean up the inside of the lid as well Okay, so we've de nibbed it nice and smooth, 400 grit, but you know, as you can sort of see, it's very sort of like, there's a lot of sort of shiny pieces on it, so there's high spots and low spots, so we want to even that out, because if you go to wax that right now, you're going to end up with a very patchy finish, okay? Now, the best way, you know, sort of like, to be quite honest, years ago I would have used wire wool, okay, steel wool done it that way and saying that you always get a wee bit of wire that can get stuck in the grain you know it's a bit sort of messy so what i use now is um these webrax discs okay now this is the finest you can get well there's actually a polishing one above that but the finest grit really is uh it's a gray it's 1500 grit okay now you can, you can buy these obviously in sheets as well. I buy them in discs because I actually put them onto my um, sander. But basically what you'd be doing would be, you'd be rubbing like this to create a matte finish. But I'm going to show you the way that I do it and that's with the uh, orbital sander. Okay, quite simply, disc on, make sure it's well on, okay, and um, if you go over this, it produces a lovely matte finish, okay. Okay, so what you've got now, you probably not see it on that, but what you've got now is a lovely matte finish. Although it's a bit dry sort of looking, but it's matte as opposed to the other parts that have sort of shiny spots and low spots, okay? So we're going to do the rest of this and this, and then we're going to wax, all right? Okay, now before we wax the inside of the lid, our dry area, which is where the glue is going to go, we want to make sure we put a wee bit of masking tape on that there, just so that there's um, no wax getting onto this area where the glue won't stick. So, let's quickly get some on. I actually stick that to the table. <laughs> I'll see if I'm moving about. Okay, so make sure that's well down there. Okay. 
okay? Now, I'm not actually going to mask off my miter joints because, you know, there's a lot more sort of glue area in there. Plus, you know, it'd be a lot easier to sort of apply the, the uh, wax. Right, guys. I'm going to add some wax. Now, this wax here, Super Wax Polish. It's actually quite good. It's not, it's quite easy to apply and spread out. Some waxes there I've found over the years have been very, you know, quite sort of tough to sort of apply, you know, evenly. This stuff here, you know, I came across it quite a few years ago. That tub, well, we don't wax lots of projects, but that tub's lasted for quite a while. So I have a wee rag that I always sort of keep in there, you know, and it's just a matter of so what you don't want here now is you don't want to be like lumps like that okay you know that's going to take you forever to sort of spread that out so let's not do that because remember the inside's more for fill okay that it's nice and silky smooth right you're not really there trying to sort of produce massive production because wax will not you know, it's really not that hard wearing, okay? So you want it just a small amount on there. Okay, so come on in. Put a wee bit on there, we don't want that on. Okay, so, and you wanna push off like this rather than rub it into the, the miter because, you know, again, that's the area. And you wanna rub it in quite hard to get it right into your, uh, you know, your grain. So it's got that nice, deep, lush look. Okay, it's only small amounts. Again, rub it off. And then go over it. Maybe dry areas. Hit them and then just go like this because what you want to do is you want to even that out you don't want like lumps of wax okay so there's a very little amount of wax over that okay let's do the rest Whoa, quite a workout. Okay, so let that sort of sit to dry for maybe sort of, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, okay? And then we'll give it a wee buff. Right, okay. So that's had a few, that's had sort of 10 or 15 minutes to dry, depend on your wax and whatever you use. Okay, so you want to buff off. Now you can either do the sort of like workout way or have a wee sort of mini polisher, right? You know, and it obviously does, you know, good work with it a lot quicker. So, but if you were buffing off, you want to sort of buff with a grain. So, because we use the web bracks to give it that matte finish, what we have now is a nice, even finish. That's really, really nice. It's going to be hard to pick that up in the camera. Okay, but if you were using, if you have a wee mini polisher, Okay, these things are pretty handy like, so it'll be just... <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so nice even sort of finish. Nice and smooth. That wee sort of pad that I'm using, it's just like a wee microfiber pad, you know, or you can have, or you can get sort of just like wee s'more uh, sort of lamb's wool sort of uh, attachments. But what we have now is we're ready, pretty much ready to sort of um, bring the box together and glue up, okay? So what I want to do first is 
the way I glue up is um, I actually I only, only apply glue the one miter okay now you'll not get any squeeze out right any squeeze out at all if you follow this and the joints will be strong okay if you get squeeze out into your joint even if you've waxed and finished the inside okay the glue will pick off a lot easier but it always leaves like a shadow line okay also you know you can tape up these areas so that when you um, glue up the box and then pull the masking tape off that's also sort of messy because it's again too much glue get in there it has to go out somewhere so it's getting the right amount of glue in the first place and you know we're going to sort of do a way to show you how to sort of achieve a stronger sort of joint you know on the miters without having to sort of you know reinforce but first what we want to do is because when I'm applying the glue I want to apply it to the miter but I don't want sort of any glue obviously getting into the inside so I'm going to apply a wee bit of masking tape just to prevent glue the glue brush getting into the inside okay okay so before you uh, we add the sort of glue or the tape we'll do a wee dry run okay make sure you sort of have everything at your ready you know before you glue right so I'll put up the dimensions that the lid should be cut to um, what we're going to do is we're going to glue up the box and the lid's going to go in at the same time okay um, so basically you're going to come together like this and we'll add a wee bit of tape to here Okay, so you want to be pushing down, add a wee bit of tape so that the, the tops align. Okay, and then put that miter tight. Now, I know a lot of people are sort of rely on the tape. You know tip over the top and pull in here and all this and I use the tape basically to bring the box together but I like to add a couple of clamps I just like that wee bit of sort of like extra pressure to get them miters in you know nice and tight okay um, so basically that's we would sort of hover glue we would then add some glue in around the, the lid the lid would then go in like so and then I use these type of clamps they're sort of quite sort of cheap you know framing clamps made by Stanley pretty handy now the only thing is these sort of plastic blocks will they'll make dents in the side so you just need to sort of add a couple of I mean this is literally you know about a mill thick it's like a couple of bits of veneer taped together like that so I'll just show you pick up a slack okay take up the slack and make sure the corners aligned lock it up add a wee bit of pressure next clamp check your corners lock it up the lens up to the top some pressure and really what you're looking out for is you're just looking to make sure that the top miters are nice and tight because once we after we've veneered the top and all and we 
we're going to cut a wee sort of chamfer for the border. You want to show nice tight miters, okay? So you don't have to sort of swing on them because the only thing is you're just distorting the box. Okay, so we got that. You'll need a wee pressure block for the lid, okay? Which is basically slightly smaller than the size you'll cut your lid. It has a couple of bits of three millimeter MDF around the outside because that's where you want your pressure. You want your pressure along here. You don't want it in here, okay? So that would then be aligned within your lid. Okay. Now, what you can do then, is if, if you haven't got sort of a wee sort of manual press, is just to add clumps. Okay. So you really want at least sort of like the clumps to be hit in the middle. Or if you've got an open table, you know, put a couple of clumps around the outsides. Okay. So you need to have these items at the ready before you start thinking about popping glue on okay because you're just going to add, end up adding stress and then of course it'll not go right will it okay so we'll take these off get it back ready for the glue okay okay so before we add the glue we want to add a wee bit of masking tape just to prevent us putting the glue on and it going into the inside of the box okay now if you come in close you'll see the thickness of the veneer on the inside that's really all we want the tape to come into okay so just hold on there we say So basically, you just want your tape to come in slightly to the inside, okay? You know, it just means when we put the glue on here, we can then rip that tape off with a nice clean edge. Okay, right over here. So the glue is PVA glue, just white glue with a small amount of water, okay, a small amount, you know, maybe 5%, okay, because what we want is we want the first, we're going to wet the joints first. In other words, we're going to put on a layer of glue, we're going to actually let that absorb in, and then we're going to put another layer on. There's probably been times where you've sort of used PVA or woodworkers glue and you've put it on and then by the time you've got it started to grab, stressful, it's because, you know, the reason it's starting to grab so quick too is because the, the end grain is absorbing and starting to grip. But we're going to sort of fill sort of that end grain in, you know, and then the glue gives you a wee bit more sort of open time, a wee bit of play time, okay? So I apply it to with a ruler. It gives me a more sort of like rather than of a brush, you're sort of stand there, you know, doing that lump down there. Okay, take a so it's just a it's a bit quicker because when we sort of go to do sort of like batch runs, you know, it speeds the process up. Okay, so Now, we don't need to coat the whole roller because what we're doing is we're only putting it in like so. So, we just coat the end of it here. We want to fill that roller up at the end. Okay. So, Okay, so you don't want any big sort of drippy lumps um, because we're only putting a fine layer over to wet it first. Let's see how we look. Okay, 
Okay guys, nice and even, that's all you want. Remember that tapes there just to prevent not getting to the inside. Another wee bit. Now, on this part, you want to make sure you wipe up from the outside because you get a wee bit of glue comes over onto the outside there, okay? Now, it's nice and even. Let that absorb in a wee bit. Maybe for, um, you know, a minute at the most. Okay, okay so... Now we're actually putting on our glue layer. Now on this part, you actually want it so you've got a reasonable amount of glue on the end of your roller there. And then Okay, so take off your masking tape. And what you've got is you've got this wee sort of like dry line there. Where your masking tape was. Okay, so let's get this together. So what you want to do is up, close it up, but don't close it right up yet. So if you want to come over here, remember our glue groove, so their glue wants to go into that edge there. Just stand a wee bit shy of the corner. Okay. Pop our lid in. Bring it together. Push down, add a bit of tape. Now close that joint up. Make sure you add them because if you get dents in your box, well, you don't have to sand, just remove and remember it's veneer. So, a little bit of pressure. So that's just fail just enough, okay? Nice and clean. Okay. And then our 
pressure block. Okay. And then I'll go over it in the mattress. Okay, so just to recap, the glue that went inside your lid, I just used the yellow. You could use the PVA, but undiluted. You know, you want sort of full strength there. You're not going to wet it. You're just putting it in. Um, and remember, the glue grooves that we spent a wee bit of time sort of doing. What we have now is we have our lid in. There's no glue squeeze out. Nice and neat. Okay. On the next time, we're going to take that out. Really want that to sit overnight. We're going to take that out. Sand the top. Veneer. And then we'll take it forward, get some finish on there, get it separated. Not be long. All the best, guys.